Good evening. Welcome to the Scotch Plains Fanwood Board of Education regular public meeting. Today is June 23rd, 2021. Mrs. Saradaki, will you please call the roll? Mrs. Borath? Here. Mrs. Brody? Here. Mrs. Suriani? Here. Mrs. Williams? Present. Mrs. Winkler? Here. Dr. Kulkowski? Here. Quorum is present. Thank you, Mrs. Saradaki. Please join me in the salute to the flag. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Prior to meeting here in public, we had our executive session. And during that time, we spoke about the personnel agenda, a HIB report, and the special education report. At this time, Dr. Mast, do you have a message? Yeah. So, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the final board meeting of the 2020-2021 school year. I am delighted to be able to close out this year, gathered safely together, recognizing a couple of things this evening. One will be our tech teachers. The other will be some of our, our student scholar athletes. And in addition to that, it is also our last board meeting with Debbie Saradaki. So it's significant, but we're going to savor this meeting <laughs> and all of the leadership and guidance she has given us over the years. Um, if I could also just add Mr. Patuco is going to give us a brief update on the work he has done regarding substitutes because that has been significant in keeping the schools open and running during the pandemic. Mr. Patuco. Okay, just a quick update. Uh, this year we held 15 sub workshops training sessions, which is much more than we've done in the past. Um, we've hired 60 new substitute teachers throughout the school year. Six more are ready to go for August. They're just working, uh, finishing up their background checks. And we have two more workshops scheduled to, for July so we can gear up for the new school year. Last year we also contracted um, with Swing Substitute Service to supplement our substitute pool. And from January through June, they were able to provide us with 80 substitutes to help fill our openings. So we have made significant progress and we look forward to continuing that for the next school year. Thank you. So that very intentional work has been very helpful. Thank you for your leadership in that area. And I just have one more exciting announcement in, in regarding our efforts in communication. I'm pleased to announce that tomorrow we'll be launching the district Facebook page. Uh, I'm keeping with our district communication plan and in, and in addition to our Twitter handle at SPF Proud, which already has 888 followers, the district Facebook page will be another way to maintain open communication and transparency within our SPF community. So we will be posting that information on the website and we will also be tweeting that out. So hopefully you will all join and follow us on Facebook. That's all I have, Dr. Kolakowski. That all, all right. Thank you, Dr. Mast. Um, we have some additions to the agenda. Uh, LET, one letter to the board. 1S, out of district placements. Uh, 2S, out of district <clears throat> placements, additional extended school year for 2021. 10S, American Rescue Plan Act of 2021. 2BUS for 2021, used computer bid is postponed. 9BUS, Cefeli and Son general construction proposal postponed. 10BUS, 2021, related services, private vendor. 11 BUS 2021 Special Ed Settlement Agreement, 1 BUS for 21-22, Bid Award for Custodial and Electrical Supplies for 2021-22, 20, 25 BUS Staff Training, Additional Report Added, 26 BUS for the 21-22 is the Approval of Submission of Grants, 27 BUS 21-22 First Children Contract, 28 BUS, Power School SIS Maintenance and Support Quote. 29 BUS, 2122 is Power School E-Collect Quote. One POL, 
policy 5610 suspension and policy 5620 expulsion three obb negotiating services postponed that concludes the additions to the agenda board president's announcement the New Jersey Open Public Meeting Law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interests is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this act, Scotch Plains Fanwood Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published by having the date, time, and place thereof posted at the Board of Education offices located at 512 Cedar Street, Scotch Plains, New Jersey. Such notice was also provided in written notice and forwarded to the Times, the Star Ledger, the Township Clerk of Scotch Plains, and the Borough Clerk of Fanwood in the annual notice of regularly scheduled meetings as adopted by March 26, 2020. At this time, we will have our instructional updates. And first, we will be recognizing the spring sports, boys varsity best volleyball, and the girls spring track team recognizing Kenny Agwu boys spring track team and recognizing district tech leaders and the tech team. So, so first I would like to invite Mr. Miller up to introduce the coaches of the teams that we're recognizing this evening. Thank you everyone. Uh, sorry. Hmm. Uh, when you think about starting strong, finishing strong, ending strong, so that we can start strong next year, our boys volleyball team, as well as our track program, has emulated that motto for us. Boys volleyball this year, in I think it's their fifth year total, uh, we've had three county championships uh, held by Union County, and we have won them all. And it's a remarkable accomplishment that we just continue to come out and grow and expand. It was a remarkable season that ended, as all remarkable seasons do, with a very difficult loss in a state tournament. But on our way out, one of the greatest compliments we could get was the athletic director from St. Peter's looked at me and said, there's no way that this team has only been together for four or five years. So that the way you play is way beyond what anybody could ever expect. So to the seniors that brought us here, that led us here, we've got a lot to follow from you. And for the underclassmen that are coming back, you've got one more step to take so that you can go back and thank those seniors for allowing them to come up. In regards to track, uh, we have the fastest girl in the state of New Jersey, right here in Scotts Plains. Uh, we also have the fastest 4 by 400 team in the state. Uh, was it undefeated? Uh, they, they haven't lost, and it's just remarkable. So when you think about all of the pieces that, that these athletes have overcome, so getting through the school day, learning how to get through COVID. They've done all that. Their grades are, are they're A's and B's. Every kid in this room is an A and B student. So on top of all of their athletic prowess, they've excelled in the classrooms. And I couldn't be more proud than to, to be an athletic director of such fine young adults. Uh, and it's my pleasure to introduce our JV boys volleyball coach, Matt Ritter. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Matt Ritter. I'm the assistant coach for the boys' varsity volleyball team and also the JV uh, volleyball team uh, coach. Unfortunately, Coach Brock, who's our head coach, couldn't make it tonight. Uh, but I'd like to take the opportunity to say a few words regarding our uh, most recent season and acknowledging the accomplishment of our student athletes, uh, five of which have joined us this evening. Uh, we've got Dan Sosinski, Amir Johnson, Tony Nakuma, Nate Starosa, and Nick Rand here uh, in the front row. Um, we've had an amazing season as uh, Mr. Miller just elaborated a few moments before. I'd also like to quickly thank Dr. Mass, the Board of Education, Mr. Miller, Dr. Heisey for uh, moving uh, volleyball out of the chain <coughs> play model. We really do hope that this movement is going to allow a lot more opportunities for the students in our school to take advantage of this program. And we're looking forward to additional seasons as well. Um, this, uh, the, the board for the volleyball team has helped to establish a lot here for us. Um, they've allowed us, uh, myself, Coach Ryan, Coach Stacy, Coach Brock, to focus on uh, working with our students. Uh, so I'd like to quickly thank them and the other parents as well. Um, this year, we started off the season with a number of unknowns. Uh, we had only two major returners to our uh, volleyball team uh, because our season got cut off. We had to get, what, like three practices last year before the, uh, the quarantine began. So we had our returning uh, captains, Nate Starosa and Tony Nakuma, back with us. And their leadership in the offseason, um, you know, these guys have been friends for a number of years. I first coached uh, our seniors 
uh, back in the 2018 JV championship against uh, Union as well. So they've been playing together for a really long time. And in the offseason, they continued to hone their skills. Uh, they got the other classmen involved. And they play like a well, like a well-oiled machine. They're they're incredible people to work with. Uh, some of the nicest guys you'll ever come across, uh, ever. Um, so you know those uh, the unknowns at the beginning of the season. They they came together. They played hard, uh, and again resulted in a 24-1 uh, record, uh, which is absolutely uh, incredible. Um, again, the hard work, the uh, you know dedication of these guys is testament to their performance. We uh, had our third consecutive uh, Union County Conference uh, against. Uh, Union, and then we made it all the way to the uh, semifinals of the state uh, tournament as well. Um, if you watch any of the tape on the SPF DOE uh, website, you can see that these guys, even when they're down, they pull ahead. Um, you, you can't, you don't find that very often. Nothing could bring them down. Even in the, uh, the semifinal match, um, they kept playing to the very end. And as a coach, um, that's, that's really all you can ask for. So. Um, the Union County Honorable, I'm sorry, the Union County Awards uh, were just released a couple of minutes ago, and uh, a majority of our team was recognized as the first team or an honorable mention. So again, uh, other schools recognize our program. They recognize the hard work that our athletes do. Um, so it's been an absolute honor to see these young men grow as athletes and students in the sport. Uh, as a coach, I couldn't be more proud of their hard work and accomplishments. Uh, I thank you all for your time, and I'd like to welcome Jeff Cagle and uh, Rich McGriff to the mic to talk about the track field. Good evening, everyone. Well, I'm Coach McGriff, I'm the boys head coach. But um, our coaching staff, we all work together. You know, myself, Mr. Cago, Mr. Hernandez, Mr. Kane, Mr. Stack. Um, we all work together as a, as a unit. So. Um, when we talk about coaching boys and girls, we all consider ourselves coaches of all the, the athletes on the track team at any sport, I mean, at any um, individual or team relay event. But um, the young man I'm here to speak about today and on the team is the boys track team. And um, Kenny Agbu is the young man that I'm here to speak about. Um, the boys track team, we lost a lot. Um, we knew that the girls team was gonna be great. And as you would hear from Chicago, all the companies they had. We knew that team was going to be great. But the young men, um, we didn't know that what we were going to have coming back. But um, I remember speaking to Kenny. I, I knew we had a potential there, but we lost um, our season last year. We didn't have spring track. We had winter track this year, but Kenny being a hurdler, um, we didn't have access to <laughs> the hub on hurdles. We didn't have access to the Google those things. So we didn't get to practice there in the winter time. So for him to get to the level that he was, I mean, he lost a whole season. He lost a season that usually is where people make their biggest jump is their sophomore year. There, he lost that season. He come back in, he can't practice in wintertime. So it shows to how he dedicated himself to be there, he dedicated himself to get better. Because out of all the young men on our team, he was the one that he meddled in every, every um, um, track meet that we went to, except for the media champions. Um, he's the only one that was consistent gold medalist for that. So Kitty is our section champ in uh, 110 meter hurdles, which are, of course our school is famous for because of you know, the Nehemiah. So <laughs> you kind of expect to have that hurdle there. And uh, you know, everywhere you go, everybody was always at you know, the Nehemiah. You know, so when you go someplace and you're a boy 110 high hurdle, you have a high expectation. And Kitty meant that. Now, he meant that being a, a champ at that at our section. He was also a two-time champ at our county relays in a 400 hurdle relay and in a 110 hurdle relay. Um, I pushed Kenny a lot. I pushed Kenny a lot, uh, and, I, and he always, I challenge him. I always go, well, the girls are doing this, Kenny. And Kenny, <laughs> always, always going, but yeah, they're going to know my name. So, you know, you're a junior, so you're going to be hearing a lot from him. Um, couldn't be more proud of his performance. Kenny, yeah. Thank you. As Coach Cook said, uh, we coach together. Uh, we're both head coaches.
together, working together for 25 years now. I'd like to thank everyone for their support uh, coming out tonight, Board of Ed, uh, Dr. Mast, my old supervisor, former supervisor of the medical department. <laughs> been working together for, for quite some time. Uh, you notice we only have three of the four girls here. We didn't actually run the four by four after the three girls. <laughs> <laughs> That's against the rules. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a generation that's uh, growing up on superhero movies. Avengers, X-Men, things like that. We have our own Fantastic Four. And if we made a movie about our season, it would be much better than any of those Fantastic Four movies that they made, because none of those were any good. <laughs> <laughs> but this is what happens when you take four extraordinary young ladies and give them a really good time. They become something bigger than themselves. Now, some sports only go to certain levels and call themselves state champions. In track and field, we have a meet of champions where we determine the best in the entire state in each event. And that's where we were this past Saturday. On Saturday, we won the state championship in the 4x400 relay, running the ninth fastest time in the nation. Along the way, we won the 4x400, the Blue Devil Relays, the Uni County Relay Championship, and the Uni County Championship, setting the meet record each time. After that, we won the event at the state sectional championship and the group four state championship, culminating with our victory at the meet of champions. We broke the school record so many times this season that we lost count. A year and a half ago, we had never broken four minutes in the event, and we ended up running 346.73. We won by such a large margin at the meet of champions that the second place team was out of frame in a race video. <laughs> we were fortunate enough to have the four fastest 400 runners in school history all on the team at the same time, and we made a goal of having the type of season that we had. So this has been something we've been talking about for quite some time. Junior Grace Kennedy was our lead off leg, we could count on her to make up all the staggers on the first lap, and she passed the baton off in first every single time. Grace also was fifth in the state on Saturday in the Open 400. And this is all the more impressive considering that she had never run a spring track meet before this season. Prim Light's not here tonight, but she returned to us after being away from the team for some time. Now, Prim's known as a, uh, an all-state soccer player, but she's a phenomenal track athlete as well. Knowing, that, knowing what could happen this spring, she decided to come back, and we could not have done this without her. She was team mom to the other girls on the team, and once she got into back, back in the track sheet, she was a strong force for us. She would be difficult to replace. Sophomore Janiah Berry ran the third leg. Most teams try to hide their slow leg as their third leg, but we don't have a slow leg. We only have fast legs. <laughs> <laughs> Janiah doesn't say much but she was ultra competitive on our 4x400. People went after her, but she always broke them. Janai usually passed the baton off with an insurmountable lead. In addition to having the best 4x400 team in the state, we also had the best 400 runner in the state in Julia Jackson, and she ran the anchor leg for us. When Janai gave her the baton, we knew she would bring us home in first place. Julia was a county indoor, county outdoor, state sectional, state group four, and overall state champion in the meet of champions in the 400 this spring. And she is a school record holder in the event. She didn't lose a 400 meter race this year, just like we didn't lose a, a four by 400 race when at least three of these four girls were running. Last summer, Julia made the commitment to being a year round runner, coming out and training with us in the summer and the fall for the first time ever, and it all paid off. All right, so we work with these kids year round. And Julie and Janai were out with us in the summer um, and the fall. Grace and Corinne are soccer players. Uh, Grace came back in the winter, and then we got Corinne back in the spring. So we picked people up along the way, and everybody threw in towards our goals. The success we had was not a fluke and didn't happen without all the hard work these girls put in. The State Coaches Association last night named Julia the State Performer of the Year in the sprint events, and our 4x400 team the State Performers of the Year in all relay events. Special thanks to Coach McGriff, and especially to Coach Doherty, who's not here tonight also, for the work they have put into helping these girls achieve this level of success. The three of us have been coaching together for quite some time. They're two of the best friends I've ever had. Uh, amongst the three of us, I think we have over 80 years of 
approaching its parents. Mm -hmm. Thank you also to the parents of these girls for all the support, for allowing us to coach your daughters. Uh, we appreciate you very much. Thank you. But thank you to the girls for all the great memories. This is just, it's still surreal. Uh, this has been a long time in the making. We've been talking about this for a couple of years. Uh, there's more to come because about three of these four girls back. But it's just still phenomenal. We're still just riding such a high. And, uh, you know how proud we are. <laughs> thank you all. Well, thank you. I can really hear the passion and all the coaches' voices. And we'd like to have uh, the resolutions read at this time. And after each resolution is read, then we would like that team to come up for a photograph with the coaches. Okay, so first, let's have the boys' varsity basketball. Mrs. Winkler, I think you Boys' varsity volleyball. 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 Excuse me. Volleyball. <laughs> Mrs. Winkler, you were going to read that one? Thank you. Whereas the 2021. Excuse me. Whereas the 2020-2021 Scotch Plains Fanwood High School boys varsity volleyball team continued to be a dominant team in Union County, posting a record of 24 to 1, and whereas the 2021 boys varsity volleyball team has been in existence for six years, with the first two years as a junior varsity program, and over the past three years they have won the Union County Interscholastic Athletic Conference Championship. And whereas this year's Union County Interscholastic Athletic Conference Championship was held on May 28, 2021 at Roselle Catholic High School, wherein the Raiders defeated the Farmers of Union 2-1. to one. And whereas the 2021 Boys Varsity Volleyball team was able to defeat all of their conference opponents en route to earning the Wachung Division Championship, and whereas the 2021 boys varsity volleyball team exhibited outstanding talent, dedication, and teamwork throughout the season, and was led by head coach Brock Hoare and coaches Matt Ritter and Ryan Jendrick, this team received well-deserved recognition from fellow students, staff, and the Scotch Plains Fanwood communities for their outstanding efforts and accomplishments. Now therefore be it resolved that the Scotch Plains Fanwood Board of Education recognizes and congratulates the 2021 boys varsity volleyball team and their coaches for their outstanding achievements and wishes them continued success in all future endeavors. Would the boys volleyball team members please come forward, stand right in front of here and face Ms. Broadbent for your photo. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. To take their masks off yeah, for the photo? Yeah, you to take your mask off for your picture. picture. Please do. That's the first time we've seen it. Congrats, guys. Thank you and congratulations. Second. Oh, you want to do that now? But we're going to do them all together. Okay. Uh, next resolution was going to be um, the boys' track with Kenny Agu. Uh, Amy Bora, please. Whereas the 2020 2021 boys' varsity spring track team had an impressive season, both as individual performers and as a team. And whereas members of the boys varsity spring track team competed at the conference county sectional group and meet of champions event this season and whereas kenny agu set himself apart from the team by earning the gold medal in the 110 meter hurdles running a time of 15.38 at the north jersey group four state sectional track meet held on june 4th and 5th at ridge high school and whereas Kenny Agu exhibited outstanding talent, dedication, and teamwork throughout the season and was led by head coaches Jeff Kogel and Rich McGriff, Kenny Agu, excuse me, Kenny Agu received well-deserved recognition from fellow students, staff, and Scotch Plains Fanwood communities for his outstanding effort and accomplishments. Now therefore be it resolved that the Scotch Plains Fanwood Board of Education recognizes and congratulates Kenny Agu 
and his coaches for his outstanding achievement and wishes them continued success in all future endeavors. And next we have the girls track resolution of Mrs. Williams. Thank you, Dr. Polkowski. Whereas the 2020-2021 girls varsity spring track team had an impressive season both as individual performers and as a team, and whereas the girls varsity spring track team competed at the conference county sectional group and meet of champions events this season. And whereas select members of the 2020-2021 Girls Varsity Spring Track Team, consisting of Julia Jackson, Janai Berry, Grace Kennedy, and Corinne Light, earned champions, championships. And whereas the 4x400 relay team of Julia Jackson, Janai Berry, Grace Kennedy, and Corinne Light set the fastest time in New Jersey and a school record of 3.46.73 and won the Union County Relay, Union County North, North 2 Group 4 Sectional, Group 4, and the Meet of Champions events in the spring of 2021. And whereas Julia Jackson sent the school records in the 100, um, I think that's a time of 12.06, I should have worn my glasses, sorry. <laughs> the 200 with the time of 24.42, and the 400 with a time of 54.48 while winning the 400 at the Union County Indoor Meet, Union County, North 2 Group 4, and Group, group 4 and Meet of Champion events this spring. And whereas the 4x400 relay team of Julia Jackson, Janai Berry, Grace Kennedy, and Corinne Light represents the first female Meet of Champions winners in school history. And whereas the girls varsity spring track team exhibited outstanding talent, dedication, and teamwork throughout the season, and was led by head coaches Jeff Kegel, Rich McGriff, and assistant coach Dan Dougherty. This team received well-deserved recognition from fellow students, staff, and the Scotch Plains Bandwood communities for their outstanding efforts and accomplishments. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Scotch Plains Bandwood Board of Education recognizes and congratulates the 2020-2021 Girls Varsity Spring Track Team and their coaches for their outstanding achievements and wishes them wishes them continued success in all future endeavors. Mr. Miller, could you join this picture? resolutions that were moved do I have a second so moved. thank you mrs. Brody any questions comments all those in favor aye, aye. aye. any opposed abstaining motion carries all three resolutions have passed congratulations to all the athletes and their coaches taking time to come out tonight we know it's a busy week we know it's an exciting time of year uh, but we again are so proud of all of you both the coaches and all of our athletes thank you so much for doing that and bringing pride to our school and our community go Raiders <laughs> <laughs> so, so now Dr. McGarry is going to help us celebrate a different kind of coach and a different type of work that was done this year. But, but people who have been running equally fast all year long. <laughs> That's true. 
I think we could all agree that our teachers, our counselors, nurses, instructional aides, administrators, and just about all of our staff members deserve a place among those that we call pandemic heroes. And on this eve of the last day of the school year, we wish them all a much well-deserved break from a year which we climbed more steep learning curves than we care to remember, all the while working hard to flatten the COVID curve. It was often said that this year was like flying a plane while still building it. With each pivot we made from fully remote to hybrid to full days with many more students back in our schools, while 17% still learned remotely all year, our plane was remodeled to meet the different demands placed on it and the crew on board. With each iteration, two teams of unsung heroes worked nonstop behind the scenes to make sure that teaching, learning, and student growth continue to accelerate throughout the year. One team worked to make sure that our technology infrastructure and greatly expanded inventory of devices did what we needed them to do. We are deeply appreciative of their efforts to deploy devices and wireless hotspots and to troubleshoot equipment and systems throughout the year. Please join me in demonstrating our appreciation and gratitude for the efforts of those who work within our technology department, led by Adam Strach, who's right here. <laughs> and assisted by Jonathan Alves, George Hamwe, Ryan Anov, and Amelia, Tremig Amelia Treglia. So thank you to all of them. Others stepped into roles created for this year catapulted into these roles last summer by becoming Google Certified Educators, an endeavor graciously supported by the Education Enrichment Foundation of Scotch Plains Fanwood, to whom we are also quite grateful. Led by our multi-talented Supervisor of World Languages and ESL, who also serves as our District Testing Coordinator, Lisa Howard, who's here this evening, and supported by our amazing supervisory team, these teacher leaders quickly explored and helped to identify new tools, developed training programs, offered individual and group coaching sessions throughout the year, created on-demand professional development content, content, and operated a virtual drop-in center, and were sources of creativity and encouragement for staff members who all made significant additions to their repertoire of instructional strategies this year. Tonight, we want to express our deep gratitude to our mighty team of tech coaches. They are, and if you're here tonight, if you wouldn't mind standing, uh, Carmen Barreros, Swati Belusu, Casey Cass, <laughs> Kristen Sakini, Larissa Clark, Marcella Cutrona, Suprit Darmi, Caitlin Disney, Matthew Ducker Duffy, Christiana Garcia, Zachary Hebner, Greg Hillman, Sarah Hulick, Jennifer Jenkins. Jeff Cagle, who really knows what it's like to run all year long, right? <laughs> Randolph Kutzner, Nicole Krupa, Julia Lewis, Ron Litz, John Lawn, Megan Madalena, Brianna Mahoney, Ryan McKenna, Samantha Melworm, Alexandra Neidig, Victoria Pino, Caitlin Reiser, Karen Sanchez, Jamie Socha, Adrian Stack, Robin Stavos, Allison Welch, Elizabeth Wichard, and Philip Yap. Together, these coaches provided close to a thousand hours of expertise and helped our plane fly as smoothly as possible for the long 180-day trip. Please join me in expressing our deep gratitude for their work. I Thank think you. all of our tech members and tech team leaders should come forward for their picture today as well. Come on down. <laughs>
If you want to take your mask off for the photo, oh, please yeah, do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just in case you think their work is done, we've already reached out to sign them up for next year. <laughs> Well, thank you for all that you have done and that you do, and we couldn't have made it without you. So thank you for your presentation, Dr. McGarrington. Thank you to all the tech team members and tech team leaders. Okay, well, that com completes our instructional updates. So moving right along, in accordance with the Scotch Plains Family Public Schools Bylaw 01640165, the meeting will be open for 15 minutes for public comments. Maximum of three minutes per speaker. Speakers addressing the superintendent items, business functions, and other board business will be heard first. If time remains, speakers may address other matters. Speakers, if you'd like to speak, please come right up to the podium. State your full name and the town in which you reside. Please note that board members cannot respond regarding concerns of individual students or staff members. Such members should be addressed with the superintendent's office. I think we're going to get a song. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't planning on doing that tonight. Um, my name's Jan Allen. I'm the choir teacher at the high school, but I live in Bridgewater. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, I just wanted to take a minute tonight to thank the Board of Ed and the administration of the district for your support of Repertory Theater this year. Um, as most of you know, our season was cut off right in the middle of our two weekends of shows last year for Chicago. And like a lot of people, we had a huge amount of loss because of that. And um, one of the things that's been so difficult in the arts is losing that sense of community, which is so essential to the arts within our music programs, particularly in vocal music, but also in instrumental. And one of the things when our staff as Rep Theater, when we all met together, one of our like main goals for the year was do a live show. We want a live show. We want these kids out there performing for the community. We want them out there, you know, representing our school and doing what they love best. And, um, you know, there were a lot of hurdles to jump over this year. And you are one of the reasons. You are a main reason that it happened. And um, we are eternally grateful for that. And I have to tell you, there were students that were so upset and disillusioned going into this year that they actually talked about not even auditioning for the show. And with some encouragement, they ended up doing it. And when we met on our last 93 degree day <laughs> out on the football field for our powwow, where each senior talks about how much the show meant to them, some of those very same kids talked about how they couldn't even believe that they considered not doing it this year and how much it changed the whole trajectory of this year for them. And um, another senior said, I came into this show the first time my senior year, and I feel like I found a family here. And um, I, just, I was just so grateful that we were able to do that, and I wanted to express that thanks to you, um, really because that has made the biggest difference to this whole year for so many people, through the students, through the staff of the Repertory Theater, through our department here, and then also through the members of the families and other people who came to see our shows. So um, thank you so much for your support of the theater program. It was a huge endeavor, and like we wouldn't have ha it wouldn't have happened without you. So I just wanted to offer you my most sincere thanks. And next time I will prepare a song. For you. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you for your comments, Ms. Allen. I did see the show on one of those days. I'm still got some color from sitting out there on those bleachers, but it was excellent. Okay, thank you. And uh, the next person to make a public comment, please approach the podium. Yeah. Hello again, everybody. Um, please state your name oh, and the sorry, town in which you reside. Um, my name is Matt Ritter. I live thank in you. Warren, uh, New Jersey. Thank um, you. I am a biology teacher, a volleyball coach, and club advisor in Scotch Plains Family School District. Uh, this evening, I am back up at the podium uh, serving as a proud representative of the SPFEA, uh, who alongside our membership has risen to the profound challenges associated with this school year. Uh, we have an absolutely amazing group of dedicated staff members who have pushed themselves this year to go above and beyond whatever we thought was possible. I mean, just take a look at our tech coaches here and our, our choral and our athletics. Everybody has worked so hard this year. 
to bring so much of our passion to our student body. Uh, our nurses have worked long and hard to keep our students safe in school and worked long hours to help facilitate contact tracing. Our athletic trainers have adjusted and worked tirelessly to help our student athletes compete safely under frequently changing guidelines. Our teachers, counselors, child study team members have completely revamped their pedagogical strategies, learned new techniques and technologies, and have collaborated more than ever to do our best to engage our students both academically and emotionally. Our secretaries and office assistants have also risen to new challenges uh, and have done an amazing job of supporting the infrastructure of our buildings and our student body. Our paraprofessionals have also worked diligently to learn new technologies to best assist their students in their online and virtual classrooms. Lastly, our coaches, music, choral directors, student club advisors, and anyone else that I unfortunately may have forgotten uh, have also done a remarkable job in navigating new ways to share their passions with their students as well. We have a remarkable amount of passionate people in our district that care so much about the students in the community at large. Three minutes would never be enough to cram all the amazing things that our members have done this year, but I wanted to quickly take this opportunity to share a brief glimpse into all of the moving parts of the membership that have helped bring this year to a close. I'm looking forward to working uh, with you, Dr. Mast, and the Board of Education and the other central administrators to continue to make Scotch Plains family the community of learners that we can all be proud of. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Ritter. Is there another person for public comment at this time? Okay, seeing no one, we'll close this portion. There will be another opportunity later in the meeting. Moving on to committee reports. Are there any committee reports this evening? Mrs. Winkler. I have a committee report for the, oh. No, I'll talk about policy when we get to policy. Okay. At this time, I'll just say that the policy committee <laughs> met on the 21st. Thank you. Dr. Kolkowski, I have a report. You have one, Mrs. Williams, go right ahead. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. The Wellness and Equity Task Force meeting uh, met right before our board meeting tonight. And we are um, celebrating some of the accomplishments that we um, had during the year with our partners, Truth Racial Healing Transformation, Real Parents, um, as, um, Social Justice Matters. And um, just to highlight, we are the TRTH, TRHT, mm -hmm. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Their next, um, their next uh, healing circle will be June 30th, and they'll be monthly going forward, 12 o'clock to 1.30, and we will be sharing thoughts on what's been going on in the virtual world during this um, school year. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mrs. Williams. We are gonna be meeting um, most likely in August also. Okay. Thank you. You just let us know when that is. Absolutely. Okay, any other reports this evening? No committee reports. Then we'll move on to letters from the board. One letter was received by the board and the proper administrator has replied. Next, superintendent's report, Dr. Mast. Thank you, Dr. Kulikowski. So I'm going to read them all in a bunch. 1S, I move that the Board of Education approves the private and public out of district placements for the 2021 2022 school year as listed. 2S, I move that the Board of Education approves the additional ESY 21 private and public out of district placements as listed. 3S, I move that the Board of Education affirms the superintendent's decision in the one HIB case reported in executive session on June 17th, that was determined not to be HIB. 4S, I move that the Board of Education approves the submission of HIB and SSDS for the time period of September 2020 to December 2020 to the NJDOE. 5S, move that the Board of Education approves the annual code of conduct as reviewed by the administrative team for the 2021-2022 school year. 6X, 6S, I move that the Board of Education approves the Danielson rubric for teacher evaluation and the Marshall rubric 
for Administrator Supervisor Evaluation for the 2021-2022 school year. I'm going to skip 7S for 8S. Move that the Board of Education acknowledges the receipt of FY 2021 by annual gifts to the SPFHS Music Department of the following donated musical instruments, multiple percussion, trumpets, and a ukulele from Mrs. Saradaki. Uh, for 9S, move that the board in cases where action must be taken within the school system, including the hiring of personnel while the board is in recess, the superintendent is authorized and shall be expected to act. The superintendent's decision shall be subject to review and approval when appropriate by the board, and it is the superintendent's duty to inform the board promptly of such, such action. 10S, move that the board approves the American Rescue Act of, Rescue Plan Act of 2021, the plan for safe return, in-person instruction, and continuity of services as presented to the public during the June 17th, 2021 board meeting. Okay, Dr. Mast has moved, moved numbers one through 10, excluding number seven at this time. Do we have a second? Mm -mm. No, you need someone to make the motion. I thought she made the motion. Okay, then do I have a motion, so Mrs. Moved. Winkler? Do we have a second? Second. Mrs. Soriani, thank you. Are there any questions or comments at this time? <coughs> Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries. Dr. Matz, please go on. For 7S, I move that the Board of Education. For 7S, we didn't do the roll call. Oh. Move that the Board of Education approves the student 2021 summer assignments. And that's for curriculum approval. But I actually don't think that needs a roll call, the summer assignments. So moved. It wouldn't need a roll call. Oh, okay. All right, Mrs. Winkler has made the motion. Do we have a second? Second, Boroff. Thank you, Mrs. Boroff. Any question or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries. Thank you, Dr. Mast. You're welcome. You can go on with personnel, though. Happy to. For, for one personnel, move that the Board of Education approves the superintendent's recommendation that we discussed on June 23rd in exec. So moved. Thank you, Mrs. Brody. Is there a second? Second. Mrs. Winkler. So Mrs. Uh, Saradaki, for the last time, will you please call the roll? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Mrs. Brody? Yes. Mrs. Winkler? Yes. Mrs. Boroff? Yes. Mrs. Suriani? Yes. Mrs. Williams? Yes. Dr. Kulikowski? Yes. Motion carries. And for two PERS, we approved the appointment of board officials in our last meeting. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. Mast. You're welcome. And Mrs. Saradaki, when you're ready, you can read your business functions for the final time. <laughs> um, first, I would like to handle the 2020-2021 resolutions as a group. All right. Um, 3BUS, I'm asking the board to ask, uh, approve transfer of any current year surplus to reserves. Um, this just allows us to do this. Uh, the decision's actually made when the, uh, by the Finance Committee when the um, audit is complete. So there are a number of things that the board can choose to do with the surplus from this year, and this is just one of them. It allows them to make that decision if they choose to. For BUS, I'm asking that the board acknowledge the receipt of the board secretary's report, the treasurer of school funds report, and budget adjustments for May 2021. 5 BUS, I'm asking the board acknowledge receipt of the disbursement listings for May 2021. 6 BUS, I'm asking the board to approve the bills for the period May 22nd through June 18th, 2021 in the amount of $4,513,105.21. 
7 BUS, I'm asking the board to approve the receipt of the fire and security drill reports for the month of May. 8 BUS, I'm asking that the board approve the purchase of a 2022 model year 54 passenger Bluebird Vision school bus. Um, the amount is $131,709.95. This is a wheelchair adaptable bus, which means we can remove seats and um, include up to two wheelchairs in the bus. These funds will be taken from 2019 to 20, excess extraordinary aids, and this makes our entire bus fleet up to date. Uh, nine BUS, uh, we're not asking for approval this evening. Uh, we're still looking into the actual needs in um, the, con the walkways. 10 BUS, um, asking the board to approve A&J Pediatric for an additional $1,000, physical therapy. 11 BUS, I'm asking the board to approve the special ed settlement uh, for Cambridge School, as discussed in exec. We have a motion. So moved. Thank you, Mrs. Borak. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mrs. Winkler. Any uh, questions or any comments? Okay, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries. Please continue, Mr. Taradaki. Yes, for the 2021-2022 school year, I ask the board to approve the um, bid award for custodial supplies. You'll see here the amount that each um, of the categories where they had the highest, um, the lowest, I should say, prices. Um, to BUS, I'm asking the board to approve the lease purchase for the 2021-2022 school year. This provides us funding for our techno some of the funding for our technology needs and uh, the interest rate was 1.15 percent. 3 BUS, I'm asking the board to approve the bid award for athletic reconditioning for 2021-22. Stadium Systems Incorporated was the lower bidder. For BUS, I'm asking the board to approve the uh, insurance for 2021-2022. You'll see here a list of all the insurances that we have and the difference percentage-wise from last year. The one insurance that's not included on this list that we discontinued this past year is international travel for our students. Um, if a trip gets planned, will we we will look at that at that time to make sure that we have the insurance before they travel. Five BUS, um, I'm asking the board to approve the renewal of facility applications which go to the state on an annual basis. Six BUS, I'm asking the board to approve the QSP system for the cafeteria which is pay schools in the amount of $8,804.38. 7 BUS, I'm asking the board to approve frontline uh, at a 3% increase. Um, if, um, at a, and the total will be $79,109.85. 8 BUS, I'm asking the board to approve system 3000 renewals, which is our accounting personnel and payroll system at an amount of $47,996. 9 BUS, I'm asking for the approval of the contract with Energy for America for 2021-22 at a cost of $94,740. That's a 2% increase over the prior year. 10 BUS, I'm asking for the board to approve the agreement with Union County Votech Schools, a 0% increase, and this is for tuition for the 2021, that should say effective 2021. 2022. Uh, 11 BUS, I'm asking for the board to approve the Union County Ed Services Agreements, which cover a number of topics. It's special education tuition, special education uh, for both ESY and the standard school year, professional services for special education, non-public school textbooks, non-public school technology, non-public school nursing, non-public security aid, non-public IDAB, mm -hmm. and non-public chapters 192 and 193. 
and they, what they do is they actually pay for these services um, and bill us for these services, and they get a percentage for handling all the paperwork. 12 BUS, I'm asking the board to approve an agreement uh, for the McKinney-Vento Education of Homeless Children and Youth Program, which is a cooperative, I believe, isn't it, service, if, if they get it going. Um, 13 BUS, I'm asking for the board to approve our E-rate consultant for 2021-22. Uh, 14 BUS, I'm asking for the board to approve our um, Arthur J. Gallagher Risk Management Services and Dan Reagan as our as the exer area executive vice president as our insurance risk manager. 15 BUS, I'm asking the board to approve Centrix Benefit Consulting, Ed Gunther as the employee benefits agent for the district for 2021-2022. 16 BUS, I'm asking for the board to appoint the uh, EI Associates and Potter Architects as our current architect of record. Uh, 17 BUS, I'm asking for the board to uh, reappoint Phoenix Advisors as our bond counsel. Uh, no change in the price of $4,000 per year. 18 BUS, I'm asking the board to approve a full list of related service vendors for ESY and the school year 2021-22. And... Which one was that? That was 18. 18. Okay, so I got it 19. 19 BUS, I'm asking the board to approve Atlantic Health Systems Urgent and Specialty Care located in Clark for the following services. New employee physicals, CDL physicals, hepatitis B titers and vaccines, drug screens, MRO services, and PPD. Uh, our estimated cost for the whole school year is about $12,000. 20 BUS, I'm asking the board to approve uh, Dr. Susan Kay is our school physician at a cost of $28,090 for the school year. 21 BUS, I'm asking the board to approve a football physician contract uh, with St. Barnabas Medical Center and the cost is $250 a game to provide a physician plus a 10% administrative fee. 22 BUS, I'm asking the board to approve purchases under the Ed Data contract from Atra Janitorial Supply Company for custodial supplies for 2021-2022 in the amount of $131,474.95. 91 that is less than we normally have. It's usually closer to $200,000, and the reason is because a lot of supplies uh, were not used during the year because of the reduced number of days students were in. 23 BUS, I'm asking the board to approve Rutgers Biomedical Health and Health Sciences, oh, okay, for the therapeutic students for students and families in the amount of $134,958. This is for next school year. It actually starts during the summer and this will be paid for by the ESSER II grant. And as it's a shared service, bidding is not required. 24 BUS, I'm asking the board to approve the listing of athletic official fees for 2021-2022 as, as was attached to what was sent to you. And 25 BUS, I'm asking the board to approve the staff training reports dated June 23rd. 26 BUS, I'm asking the board to approve submission of the IDEA grant, the ESEA grant, and the ESSER III grant as identified on the agenda. 27 BUS, I'm asking the board to approve the agreement to use ser services of First Children's Services for therapeutic services for next year. 28 BUS, I'm asking the board to approve power school SIS maintenance and support quote in the amount of $32,144 for next year. And lastly, power school e-collect quote, 29 BUS for $16,665. And that will begin on September 15th and go through September 14th, 2022. Thank you, Mrs. Saragaki. Do we have a motion? 
So moved. Thank you, Mrs. Winkler. Is there a second? Second, Williams. Thank you, Mrs. Williams. Any question or discussion? I have a question. Um, just on, for seven uh, BUS and eight BUS, uh, seven being frontline renewals and eight being uh, system 3,000 renewals. <clears throat> I don't know if you know this offhand, and uh, probably last year it might have been different, but the increase of three and four seems a little bit higher than our normal year to year. Yeah, uh, I can understand that, and I have conversations with these companies. Actually, frontline last year was close to 5%. Um, last year? Yeah, and... Um, they offered us 3% if we would plan to use them for three more years. Well, for three years total. So this contract is through just next Front, are you talking about that? The front line, yeah. So we're locked in for three years, right? At that rate, though? Mm-hmm. Thank you. Um, Systems 3000, the overall increase is 3% when you consider all the components that we get from them. Um, that is just for the one year. Um, I have talked to both these companies about how we have a 2% limit on our budget and that's, well it's not really on the budget even, it's on the tax levy, so it's less than 2% on our budget. Um, they both seem pretty inflexible as far as that goes. <laughs> There's some other so. the monopoly. Yeah. Ooh. Mrs. Soriani, you also had a question? I do. Um, on 4BUS for the insurance costs, can you explain the line item for the supplemental liability insurance, the, the increase of 27% for causing that? Am I reading that right? Yes. Can you talk about that? Um, that one line, I actually didn't get information on the other. I know that um, many of the insurances have gone up quite a bit. Um, I, we were very fortunate because we got to talk about a couple others too. Um, our cyber liability, we got the quote of 14,314, a 9.4% increase. Other districts who submitted just a couple weeks after us had much higher increases for the exact same insurance because um, they were at a heavy time for the insurance company. Um, the supplemental liability, I know that we went with, uh, that is actually 25 million that that's covering us for. It's what's over and above the excess liability through Utica, which covers us for the initial 25 million. So that's from 25 to 50 million. Um, the only, it's part of a group where various districts participate with it, and I don't know, they may have had a bad history. I can certainly ask okay, and send out an email to you to give you the answer to that. That'd be great, thank you. Any other questions for Mrs. Saragaki on those items? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries. Um, Mrs. Saragaki, I think you still have procedural. Yes, I'm going to try to just read the titles. These don't change really from year to year. There are, um, so I'll just read through them. Um, one BUS here will be payment of invoices through August 2021. Two BUS is parliamentary procedures. Three BUS is uniform minimum chart of accounts. Four BUS is collection and maintenance of student records. Five BUS is the authorization of budget transfers. 6B US is the petty cash fund. Um, 7B US is the, are the 403B tax shelter annuity brokers. 8B US are the 457 tax shelters. 9B US is the mandatory direct deposit program. 10B US is the report of awarded contracts. 11B US is the readoption of the board policy manual. And 12B US is the S is recognition um, and acceptance of the uh, master agreements that we have with the four bargaining units in the district. Thank you, Mrs. Sarriani. Um, well, anybody want to make the motion? So moved. Thank you, Mrs. Winkler. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mrs. Brody. 
Any question? Mrs. Suriani. Uh, just for the policy manual, we're, we're voting to readopt it from July 2021, right, until June 30th, 2022? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the, date, the, the dates are incorrect. Oh, mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Suriani. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries. Thank you, Mrs. Saradak. And that concludes the business functions. Moving on to board policies, uh, Mrs. Winkler. Yes, so the committee met on June 21st. Uh, we talked about two policies, uh, policy 5610 for suspension and policy 5620 for expulsion, as well as regulation 5610 for suspension. Uh, these policy changes are mandated by Public Law 2019, Chapter 479, which was recently signed into law. Um, the new statute requires the principal to convene a meeting between a student and appropriate school personnel after a student has experienced multiple suspensions or may be subject to a proposed expulsion from public school to identify any of the student's behavior or health difficulties as soon as practicable. The new statute also allows the principal to hold this meeting if it is the first time a student is suspended, if the principal deems such a meeting is appropriate. The purpose of the meeting is to ascertain whether the student needs supportive interventions or referrals utilizing school or community resources to address identified behaviors or health difficulties. When immediate removal of a student is due to a violation of the Zero Tolerance for Guns Act, an assault upon a school employee or board member with or without a weapon, the meeting required by the new law shall take place after the student is removed from the school's regular education program. As I said, these changes are, are mandated by public law and therefore required. It's, it's not really a, a matter of whether we want to make them these changes or not. I should also note that um, to, to my memory, I have no recollection of a student ever actually being expelled from our district. So this is probably you know, highly unlikely to, to, to be something that will ever really affect us anyway. Um, and, uh, and I recommend uh, at this, this evening that we approve first reading on these, on these policies and, and the one regulation. Thank you, Mrs. Winkler. Is there a second? Second. Boyle. Thank you, Mrs. Boyle. Any question or discussion for Mrs. Winkler? So the motion for first reading, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Winter. Is there any new board business? Seeing none, moving on to other board business. Uh, one OBB, any liaison reports? Seeing none, moving on to two OBB. Request to attend workshops. Seeing none, adoption of the resolution for negotiating services has been postponed for three OBB. 4 OBB, appointment of treasurer of school monies. Uh, move that the Board of Education appoints Richard Barr as treasurer of school monies for the 2021-2022 school year for the annual fee of $9,600, 3.2% increase. This contract is awarded without competitive bidding, bidding as a professional <coughs> service under the provisions of the public school contracts law. Do we have a motion? So moved. Thank you, Mrs. Brody. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mrs. Williams. Any question or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries. 5 OBB, Legal Counsel for Special Education. Uh, we move that the Board of Education approves the agreement with Sterancy Hollenbach LLC for Nathaniel G. Simon, Esquire to serve as the legal counsel for special education in other matters assigned per the same terms of the current retainer at a rate which will be $170 per hour from July 1, 2021 through June 30th, 2022 at an estimated annual cost of $55,000, which is a 0% increase. This contract is awarded without a competitive bidding as a professional service 
under the provisions of the public school contracts law. Someone want to make a motion? So moved. Thank you, Mrs. Soriani. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mrs. Borough. Any question or discussion? Being none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries. Board Attorney, move that the Board of Education approves the agreement with the Bush Law Group for Douglas Silvestro Esquire to serve as the legal counsel for the Board of Education and other matters as assigned per the same terms and rates of the current retainer at $167 per hour from July 1, 2021 through June 30th, 2022 at an estimated annual cost of $55,000, which is a 0% increase. This contract is awarded without competitive bidding as a professional service under the provisions of the public school contracts law. Can I have a motion? So moved. Thank you, Mrs. Winkler. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mrs. Boroff. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries. 7 OBB will be, uh, was approved on June 17th. And that brings us to approval of the minutes. We're gonna be approving the minutes from May 10th, open agenda meeting, executive session, and the regular meeting. May 27th, regular board meeting, and it's executive session. Can I have a motion? So moved, Boroff. Thank you, Mrs. Boroff. Is there a second? Second. Winkler. Thank you, Mrs. Winkler. Any question or discussion about these sets of minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? I abstain from, uh, do I have to, Ari? I wasn't here on May 10th. You could abstain. Okay. Yes. Well, with Mr. Soriani abstaining on May 10th. Motion carries. And that brings us to the second and final public comment portion. In accordance with the Scotch Plains Fanwood Public School Bylaw 01640165, the meeting will be open for 15 minutes for public comments, maximum of three minutes per speaker. Speakers addressing the superintendent items, business functions, and other board business will be heard first. If time remains, speakers may address other matters. Speakers, when you're ready, please come up to the podium, state your full name and the town in which you reside. Please note that board members cannot respond regarding concerns with individual students or staff members. Such matters should be addressed with the superintendent's office. So if you'd like to make a public comment, please come up to the podium at this time. Danielle Wildstein, Scotch Plains. So now that our school year is coming to an end and summer planning will be underway, what specific planning will you be doing over the summer to ensure that our schools open full time for all students come September. We cannot have and will not accept another late August pivot based on excuses for not opening. The lack of planning last summer and throughout the school year must not be repeated. Thank you for your comments, Ms. Wallstein. Amanda Hughes. It. Yeah, now it's mine. Amanda Hughes, Scotch Plains. Thank you. Okay. Kind of feeding off of that, but we didn't know what we, each other were saying. <laughs> um, what are you doing to be proactive in creating a plan A, B, C, and so on? Different from this year. As I've spoken to Dr. Mast about several times throughout the year, and as I've brought up in several virtual meetings. I am very passionate about the planning ahead, solution-oriented working style for all categories of work, but definitely for education when it comes to making sure our children are growing up the strongest possible in every way. If there is a variant or really anything in the future, what are you planning to make us feel comfortable that you are planning ahead with just-in-case options? Since no one was ever expecting this, now we realize that things like this can happen at any moment. And though we cannot plan for everything, from an educational perspective, we can certainly have plans so we put our children first. From tenting options, which we've spoken about several times, outdoors, to other solutions, 
I and others would love to hear the plans. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Ms. Hughes. Not today. Just leave it. Timothy Mail, Scotch Plains, here to fix the mic. Um, Could you repeat your name again? Timothy, Timothy Mail from Scotch Plains. Uh, just a question on the communications update. I put a lot out there last week. It's my only question. Was the verdict of that five or six month communications audit and consultant just the Facebook page? No. Or is there a bigger report? Because it's a little late. I think it was supposed to be in March. So I just really want clarity on that. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Meal. So if I may, Dr. Kulikowski. Yes, Dr. Meal. So, so at our last board meeting, we did present the, the plan that we have to submit to the, the state. I appreciate the comments of being prepared for all possible situations that could occur. Certainly, we will not be surprised. Certainly, our ventilation systems are in much better repair. Um, certainly we've learned how to function in every type of pivot, pivot given the different situations. Um, we will continue to follow medical guidance, but we know where we are in the state of New Jersey. As, as of now, the governor is saying all schools are open, there are no virtual options, and we as educators are celebrating that. We do know that we've put mitigation <coughs> plans in place, and, and they were effective. So we, we are planning to move forward in that way. And regarding the communication plan, it was delayed because the, our communication consultant had some personal obstacles that delay. But we will be giving a full report on that in August on, and it's going to be also a part of our strategic plan. But the Facebook was just a way that we could continue to increase our communication over the summer. Thank you, Dr. Mass. So what are the actual backup plans? Instead of just the errors Have that to are- state your name if you're coming Amanda up. Hudes again. I know, but the public doesn't know who's watching. Okay. So just what are the backup plans in case of anything going forward, whether it's a variant and the, suddenly the governor says you can have the option of virtual again? Are we going to have the choice? What are the backup plans? So it's not just here we have better air filtrage now. What are the backup plans? And I hope, I really, really hope that you are, if you haven't already, that you will take the time and make the effort to create those. Yes, of course, of course. It's in process and it was discussed at the last board meeting. Thank you for your additional comments, Ms. Hughes. Switching gears. <laughs> I'm Please Margaret state Hayes. Your name. I'm going to <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I'm Margaret Hayes, um, and I live in Freehold, New Jersey. Thank you. <laughs> and I used to work here. Um, as this is Debbie Saradaki's last official board meeting, I wanted to attend to honor her. I know she's not going to be happy with me, but I can't do anything about it. I sit on the other side now. <laughs> From our earliest days together, Debbie, um, first in your accounting role, and then when you became our VA, I knew that you were a gift to SPF. There are many successful business administrators in public education, but Debbie is clearly a cut above. Her child-centered philosophy shines through in every decision she makes. Her work ethic is incredible, always going above and beyond in a position that spans so many areas contracts, facilities, school safety, food services, transportation, procurement, and the list goes on. Debbie's persistence, whether dealing with difficult contractors, Superstorm Sandy, snowstorms, or wood turtles, <laughs> is remarkable. In caring for our buildings with foresight, she continually anticipates how to improve the learning environment for students and staff. She has organized and implemented amazing projects roofing, door and window replacements, air conditioning and heating improvements, 
including the 17 high school roof units that were original to the building. Refurbishing auditoriums, expanding parking areas to meet growing staff needs, lighting upgrades including sensor systems, and facilities expansion to support full day kindergarten, all within tight fiscal constraints. Her budgeting expertise is amazing, and the district's outstanding audit reports are a testament to her integrity and ethical dedication. Debbie, during our time working together, you were quite simply the wind beneath my wings. I will always be grateful for your support, your collaboration, and your friendship. My very best wishes to you and Ed for a well-deserved, enjoyable, healthy, and happy retirement. That's the iPad, huh? No, that's me. I'm going to do that later. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for your kind words, Dr. Uh, Hayes. Can I? Of course mm -hmm. you can, Mrs. Sarabaki. <laughs> Dr. Hayes, I'd like to thank you very much. It was wonderful. I, I feel so blessed to have had a job I enjoyed coming to every day. And um, that time started with you. Um, because you were the superintendent when I came here. I still enjoy coming in every day and doing this job. It's, it's very rewarding, and I feel blessed to be able to say that because a lot of people don't enjoy their jobs. And I really enjoyed helping the district move forward with many projects. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sarah Jackson. Are there any other people for public comment? Seeing none, I will close that portion of the meeting. And we will move up to the upcoming scheduled meetings. Thursday, August 26th will be our next regular public meeting at 7.30 p.m. here in the administrative offices. So at this time, we're gonna have remarks for the good of the order. And I'm gonna start that off <laughs> because the board and the cabinet has chipped in to buy you a little something. We're going away so you don't forget us. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations, Mrs. Saradak. <laughs> oh, okay. I guess we have to open it. Got all your budget wrangling and <laughs> money squeezing every penny out of every little place. <laughs> We will surely miss you. We've enjoyed working with you, having you as our board secretary, as well as our business administrator, and um, you're like no other. And you know, I've been here with other business administrators who are also very fine and qualified, but you're very personable, and you will surely be missed by everyone here on the board. my house that I'm selling when I retire. And it was done by one of our staff members in the district, Barbara Pestich. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. beautiful Thank you so day. much, everybody. You're welcome. Congratulations. 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 Does anyone else have anything for the good of the order? I yeah. do. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Yes, Brianna. <laughs> I just also want to wish Debbie the best. I've worked with you as a board member for five years. And, um, Has it been five I, years? Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I think I'm surprised to see the picture of your home because I thought you lived here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, you know, it, you are just, um, you just work tirelessly for us and, you know, all the communication behind the scenes when even when we needed liaison with New Jersey school boards and our trainings and signing us up for this and that and our questions about the agenda. Thank you for your responsiveness and 
everything you've done and I really truly hope that you enjoy your retirement and Thank best you. wishes. And, and I also just want to wish congratulations to all the seniors that are graduating tomorrow night. Um, it's, it's one of my favorite days of, of the whole year, just um, such promise and excitement. So um, best wishes to all the seniors and their families. Thank you, Mrs. Soriano. Uh, Mrs. Brody, you also had a comment? I do have two things. One is a little bit um, sad, but I really would be remiss if I didn't mention this person. So, and then I, then I have a happy thing to say. So um, I've been on the Union County Ed Services Commission for a number of years now. And um, those of you who have ever served there um, would have known Helen Kirsch. She was a board member um, from Berkeley Heights. She had been on the Berkeley Heights board for 35 years. And she was on the Union County Ed Services Commission for 25 years. And she was the president for 10. And she just recently passed away. So I, I just wanted to mention her um, and her dedication. And switching gears, I just want to say thank you to Debbie. I, ev ever since my children were teeny and I started doing all the things in the district, Debbie has always been here. So in one capacity or the other, and then as, oh, as um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and I just want to thank her for her dedication to the school district and to the children. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Mrs. Brody. Is there any other remarks? Mrs. Williams. Thank you. And to echo what um, Deb and Stephanie said, you will be missed. I don't know how you go from working 80 hours a day to <laughs> relaxing, but I hope you do get a chance to relax. I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been here for, I guess it's six years, and you've been a staple. It's nice to see you here. And you, know, you just, we, in being a member of this town, also knowing how fiscally responsible you were. Um, so you'll be missed. I really do hope that you get to enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. Any other remarks for the good of the order? Mrs. Winkler? I have a few different things. Um, I'll start by saying that yesterday I attended New Jersey Spotlight, had a program back to school in New Jersey, what to expect this fall. Um, and it, it was pretty interesting. There were a number of people on the panel, including um, Dave Adderhold, who's the superintendent in West Windsor Plainsboro, and Lisa Gleason, who is an assistant commissioner at the Department of Education and uh, Kwame Morton, who is the principal at Cherry Hill High School West, um, and Chantel Wooten, who is a, an English language arts teacher uh, in Trenton in the middle school. Um, it was a really interesting panel, and there were a lot of interesting things. But what I what I will um, emphasize that I want us to give some consideration to was um, that the the state is requiring. Uh, assessments, the learning assessments in the fall. Uh, they want it to be done in like mid-September through mid-October timeframe, which is really early into the school year um, at a time when we're looking at a lot of students who may be um, experiencing some emotional concerns about coming back into schools um, as uh, I think that our district is better situated because we did open schools and, and a lot of students have been in person uh, now for a, for a few weeks at least. Um, and so going back in September shouldn't be as difficult as it will be in districts that have been completely closed all this time. But um, but but the the educators on the panel, their main concern was, you know, how are we going to address the uh, mental wellness of these students uh, first rather than shove them right into standardized testing that the state is now requiring of us uh, even though the state said that these tests are going to be sort of shortened versions of, of what they often do but just something to keep in mind for our, our planning for the fall um, the other things I wanted to mention was new artwork which is exciting um, I love that we we always get what's going uh, What's happening within the schools shows up on our walls, which is which is a really nice thing, and and um, I'm grateful that the cicadas that we're getting are in drawings and not so much coming out of the ground. <laughs> um, and I want to thank Debbie uh, for all of your your dedication over the years, and um, you've just been amazing in so many ways. Uh, you had big shoes to fill, and you certainly filled them well, mm -hmm. and. Um, 
I just want to thank you. It's been a pleasure to work with you. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Wigber. Any other remarks for the good of the order? I feel like I have to. Is it <laughs> um, I, I just, to reiterate what everybody else has said, I, I uh, three years going on my fourth now, and um, I'm very fortunate to have such a solid and strong person in Deb to, to explain finances to me. Uh, no, but I, you, you've been absolutely fabulous, and um, the district is so much stronger because of you. We will miss you sorely, and I wish you much relaxation in your future. Um, did we have a date for the strategic plan that we wanted to announce, or a time frame? Did we say that we were we had something for the end of September, I think, in the works? Just to update everyone on that, I think I feel like we missed that for some reason. Um, and then I just really wanted to say thank you uh, to everyone, to, to the parents, to the teachers, to our amazing, all of our staff, our supervisors, um, our community itself, and really our students. Um, you know, we, we're fortunate that we get to go to, we went to the TMS moving up ceremony, I went to the TMS today, um, and tomorrow we'll be at graduation, and there's just something very, um, overwhelming when you see these kids um, and and how they took on being virtual and pivoting and they just I, I think Dr. Heise said it I'm gonna mess it up something about just to learn these lessons at such a younger age to be able to overcome that you know at, at, as we grow up I'm not putting it properly so rewatch <laughs> the tapes um, but a big huge I hope everyone gets some time to relax this summer a big huge thank you to Every one of us, everyone in our community deserves a pound back and um, a thank you. And I hope everyone has a nice break. Thank you, Mrs. Borough. And just to confirm that we did speak with Glenn Thornton, Dr. Mass, and myself, with Ms. Thornton, who is our representative. And she has a tentative date set up for September 28th, which is a Tuesday. That was to be our first gathering meeting. And then in October on the 19th, which was the second day, because usually we meet three days, and we left the, the third date open depending on how these two meetings went. Mm -hmm. Perfect, so I, I highly encourage our community to come out for those dates. It is, it, I've done it as a, as a parent, and then I did it as a parent slash board member. It is, um, it, it's the strategic plan is key and having everyone's participation is huge. Well, thank you, Mrs. Borup. And if there's any other comments, Dr. Mast. So I, too, would like to very much thank Debbie Saridaki. Um, her journey as the business administrator started with both of us together, taking New Jersey ASBO classes. And in fact, I take full credit for recruiting her <laughs> and recommending her to Dr. Hayes. And over the course of the years, I have learned so much from working with Debbie. And she's going to be very much missed However, everyone deserves a retirement. So for that, I am thrilled for you. I'm sorry you didn't get to enjoy that house more, but I know that's a place where you, you raised your kids, mm -hmm. where your heart is. You've given me a tour of that house. It's beautiful. Um, and I know you have a lot of fun memories. So I'm glad you'll be able to bring that to, to Delaware with you. And, and to um, the whole community, this has been a very hard year for everyone. But the district has kept moving forward and it has been the passion of the parents caring for their kids, for the concern of their education. It has certainly propelled me to lean in, to do my very best. And having a strong administrative team to, to do it, the, the principals had to pivot, create new, <laughs> create new schedules over again. The teachers have taught in so many different permutations, but everyone put their heart into it every day to do the best that they could. And as we look for September, let me reassure you that there will be plan A, B, C, D. It has, it has begun. The, if you look at last week's meeting, you can see that we were addressing what the state is asking for, and we have been planning beyond that. As far as Mrs. Boroff's concern, or Ms. Winkler's concern over assessment. Dr. McGarry already talked about the map testing. We've gathered some foundational data this year. We're, we're recognizing where our students are, so we're going to be able to 
to um, really hit the ground running. We feel like we really did have a strong ending because we're committed to having a strong beginning. And I want to thank all of you for being here and for helping me through. Thank you, Dr. Mast. And this is Sarah Decky. Retirement will be wonderful. Just look at Dr. Hayes. It's <laughs> <laughs> very well rested. Yes, she looks beautiful. <laughs> All right. So that concludes the remarks for the good of the order. At this time, can I have a motion to go into executive session to review the CSA evaluation? So moved. Thank you, Mrs. Williams. Is there a second? Second. So, and Mrs. Winkler, I kind of heard you first. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries. Good night. We are in exact. <laughs>